Hi, this is John Rosen here, the Jerusalem Psychotherapist. This week, Torah Psychology Post of Parshas Vayera is titled, A Meeting with Death. In this week's Parsha, Avram and Yitzchak have a meeting with death, for the Akedas Yitzchak, which is a seminal episode in the history of the Bnei Yisrael. Because it's really the time where Avram and Yitzchak both go through this test of faith, where Avram is prepared to take his son and to offer him as a korban to, to, to kill him because it's the will of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, seemingly, and Yitzchak is prepared to go through with this as well. And the value, as we said, the value of this episode of Akedis Yitzchak is because it develops this intrinsic emunah that, that Avram and Yitzchak have in, in a Kaddish Baruch Hu. It develops this, this faith, this, this significant, ultimate, this value of complete devotion, commitment, and faith in a Kaddish Baruch Hu, and then it implants this value into the spiritual DNA of the Bnei Yisrael for future generations. So I'd like to look at this, this episode of Kedis Yitzchak from a psychological perspective, as we said, because it clarifies for Avraham and for Yitzchak, it clarifies their value, this value of total faith, a munah in a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Because if we look at this idea of, of Avram and Yitzchak, of, of, of going through the Akedis Yitzchak, we say it was a meeting with death from a, in a psychological perspective. In particular, there's a therapy of ACT, acceptance and commitment therapy. There's an ex- exercise called the tombstone exercise or the eulogy exercise that, you, that actually uses this concept of a meeting with death in order to clarify a person's values. Because it looks at what, what happens when a person actually considers death or has a, a meeting with death, theoretically, when they think about it, what does it do to you? What does it do to a person? Because sometimes it can be difficult to clarify and to really understand what a person's values are because they're too busy in their life with their functioning from day to day or setting goals some certain achievements that they want to fulfill and to achieve during their life. And people are busy with that. And sometimes it can seem vague when a person tries to actually stop and understand who they are, what they are, what they stand for, what are their values. So ACT uses these exercises to clarify one's values. This meeting with death is a clarification of one's values because it requires that a person actually stops and literally they write down, they draw a picture of a tombstone on a piece of paper and they're told to consider what would they want to, what would they want to be written on their tombstone. Or they consider their hesper, their eulogy. What would they want people to say about them? And this actually demands from a person to stop and and have a a meeting with death. A a meeting with death, it can be quite a morbid exercise, a very difficult exercise, because it requires the person to stop. And through considering death in this way, it really does help a person to connect with their values. Because ultimately, when it comes to the end of a person's life, they're more concerned with what do they stand for in their life? And this helps a person to, to stop and consider and clarify their values, this meeting with death. And this is what Avram and Yitzchak did uh, achieve through their Kedis Yitzchak. This meeting with death helped them to clarify this value, this intrinsic value of Amunah in a Kaddish Baruch. And furthermore, if we consider the Kedis Yitzchak, it would seem counterintuitive at this point. We said it's a test of faith because Avram was promised that his, the Brochers would go through Yitzchak and, and the, the lineage of Avraham and the Brochas and the, and the Klaus would go through Yitzchak. So seemingly, he was losing everything to the point that the Beis Israel actually, the Beis Alevi suggests that at this point, Yishmael was almost not, was no longer Avraham's son. The lineage was only going through Yitzchak and it was as if his only son was Yitzchak and he was about to lose everything through the Akedis Yitzchak. So it seems that like it was a, this is, at this point, it's, it's just destructive. He's being told to do something destructive and negative, and it, it's very difficult to see what are the benefits. And this is the test of faith. And indeed, in life, when we face challenges, and it's also an intrinsic concept and, and a belief in the hashkaf of Ju, uh, uh, hashkaf in Judaism, that when we have challenges, sometimes we don't see the benefit initially. We, it seems to be even destructive or negative. And we don't see how it's going to work out in a productive or beneficial way. But we have to believe that it will work out for the best. And this is what we see from Achilles Yitzchak. And from a therapeutic point of view as well, when we, a person is struggling with something, especially when they go through a therapeutic process, sometimes their requirements and the ex- exercises in therapy seem counterintuitive or even destructive. And we don't see how it's going to be beneficial. 
But it is, if someone goes through the process of therapy and they're prepared to go through the difficulties and struggles of the therapy, they then will see the benefits later on. So for example, in anxiety, there's something called ERP, exposure and, re and response prevention, that there are a person who has anxiety about certain things. Initially, they are told to expose themselves gradually, to desensitize to the uh, anxiety, to the triggers, to the so what is causing the anxiety, they have to expose themselves to it, which at first might be destructive and counterintuitive, that it increases their anxiety, but gradually, through exposure, they see the benefits later on. Or there's also in family therapy, there's something called the paradoxical intervention, where a person, for example, if there's a lot of conflict and arguments between a, in a family or in a couple, the therapist might actually say, I want you to argue, but he says, I want you to, to set a time and a place where you will stop and you will argue, which is counterintuitive, it's paradoxical, but through, in a sense, you could say making it worse initially by allowing a person to argue, by allowing a, 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 a conflict to be played out, but in a structured in a structured way and in a controlled way, it can actually benef be beneficial in the long term. So this is also another idea that we see from the from Akedis Yitzchak. Have a great Shabbos and keep well.